kidding me? You are looking loud. Winning cures everything. Now for your hosts, Gary and Chris. Welcome in. It is Tuesday, June the 9th. This is Winning Cures Everything. I'm Gary. I'm Chris. And there ain't nothing going on in the world of sports, brother. Ain't a thing happening. Now, I will say, uh, we did have big news this morning. You know, obviously, uh, UFC stuff. We're going to talk about that. But after that, I didn't see a damn thing that was worth discussing today. So, that's going to let us get into our vault a little bit. Uh, We like to jump in and, you know, discuss some uh, some college football questions here and there, stuff that we just put away into a little uh, Google document, and we pull it back up from time to time, so that's what we're going to do today. Uh, the show, as always, brought to you by Tunica, Mississippi, the South's premier sports gambling destination. You can find more information on them over at tunicatravel.com. they got six wonderful sports books. We cannot, cannot stress this enough. They are open, and they are phenomenal. It's good stuff. So make sure you go and check them out, tunicatravel.com all of the uh, the policies and procedures and whatnot to make sure that everybody stays safe uh, while they are open. But the sports books and the casinos are open. They are ready for business. Make sure that you jump out there and go see our brothers down in Tunica, Mississippi. Uh, we are found over at winningcureseverything.com. Uh, it's very easy, winningcureseverything.com. All the picks, previews, podcasts, videos, social media platforms. You can subscribe to the show one, at any of your favorite podcast apps because it goes right up immediately after, or at any of the places that you see on your screen, which would be YouTube, Periscope, uh, Twitch, or what am I missing? Facebook. Uh, the chat is already up and rolling. We've got Ben that jumped in, Matt jumped in, Damian Estrada jumped in, and Michael all in from Twitch and YouTube right now. So we're waiting on the Facebook crew and the Periscope crew to dive in today. Uh, yeah, big, uh, big stuff going on, of course. Oh, and make sure you share the show out. Uh, that's actually what I'm trying to do right now. It's why I'm in, it's why I'm such a mess. It's been a a bit of a strange day. Chris, how has your day been, by the way? We haven't Uh, even talked today. No, we haven't. Today was a tough day of work. (laughs) Um, but that's all right. Made it through it. I put my nephew to work today for the first time ever. How old is your nephew? uh, He... Did a great job. 16 years old, sitting at home, okay. bored, nothing else to do. I needed an extra hand of cleanup, and I was pretty proud of the way he worked. This 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 young young boy is learning to work. Well, I can get down with that. So you got to teach him early. I understand how that works. Uh, for those that are watching on uh, Facebook, I just shared it back out on the wrong account. So <laughs> don't kill me. I keep uh, I, I can't get this thing figured out how to share it correctly. For whatever reason, so um, just click share button on the bottom. Well, yeah, but it it keeps pulling up the winning cures everything thing instead of my personal Facebook, and I don't know what's going on. So either way, I mean, we'll we'll get it figured out eventually. But good gracious, that's just ridiculous. Um, all right, so enough about that. I'll try and share it out again here in just a little bit. Um, first topic of the day. <laughs> there we go. Michael said, "Teach the youth the value of a buck." Good job, Chris. Yeah, he's that. learning. He's learning, and he did awesome too, man. Woo! Well, that's I can get down with that. I mean, obviously, that's a that's a wonderful thing. Um, let's go on and jump into uh, some actual actual uh, news today. UFC Fight Island is legit. It is actually happening. It is going down, and they announced where it is. They released some pictures of it, all that kind of stuff. It is at the United Arab Emirates. It's at Yaz Island. I believe that's how you say it. I didn't hear anybody say it. The Brown Yeti yeah. jumps in. He said, hey. Um, ben said, did you ask your nephew if he knows what capping is? I did not. <laughs> I could have asked him. He probably would have told me. There you go. Josh said, keep up the hard work uh, on Facebook. So we, we, got our, we got our Facebook bunch in here. But, Good. man, I don't know what's going on with this thing. It's just it, it's very frustrating. My app ain't working. My app ain't working. All right, UFC. Legit happening. Fight Island is a real thing. It is going down. They are doing UFC 251 there, and they have three title bouts 
that are going to happen on that pay-per-view July 11th. Kamara Usman against Gilbert Burns because they couldn't get the stuff done with Jorge Masvidal. Up comes the next guy, right? Yep. Not the fight That's everybody right. wants, but it should still be interesting. Burns, of course, knocked out, or didn't knock out, but beat Woodley uh, not that long ago. You know, that's a, that should be a good one. You've got a, a featherweight title rematch between Alex Volkanovsky and Max Holloway. Now, Max Holloway, pretty good name, uh, and he's entertaining as hell to watch. So, that should be fun. And then Peter Yan will take on Jose Aldo for the vacant bantamweight championship. That means Henry Cejudo is officially done. Uh, he ain't coming back. They are going to give the belt to somebody else. This could be interesting. Uh, none of these fights that were announced have any of the major players that we talked about. And that is disappointing, but I think they did a good job with stacking the card to make it something that, one, everybody's going to want to watch to see what Fight Island looks like anyway, right? I, I think mean, so. I'm it's on watch. the beach. I'm, I'm, I'm yeah. intrigued now. Um, and then on top of that, you know, they're, they're doing fight nights as well immediately after. They've got one on the 15th. They've got one on the 18th the week after, and then another one on the 25th. All of those will be... At Fight Island. So, obviously, it's... it. Here we go. Damien said, UFC starting to look like WWE having a show in India. Uh, well, look, they've done a fight on Yaz Island before. Like, they've they've done that. So, this one's just going to be a little different with no crowd. Uh, they have done a ton of stuff globally. They've always been a global company. I mean, that the, the last fight night that you had before the pandemic stuff was in Brazil. I mean, they, they do fights overseas and in different countries all the time because the actual roster is full of guys that are going. I heard I heard a podcast today. I don't know when it was filmed or recorded, um, but I listened to a podcast today, and a guy talked about how the UFC has done such a better job than any other major sport in America of being global. Oh yes. Oh, and they yes. really have like, we're, we're trying to get basketball globalized and we're trying to globalize football a little more and get into other countries and, and baseball, the same thing. None of them have been nearly as successful at drawing in large sums of fans than UFC has. Yeah, no, it's, it, it's pretty remarkable how they do it. Um, I, I will tell you this. I think that's where Dana White got his money. When Dana White got paid as much as he got paid to buy the UFC, it, it was because they saw global dollars, not American dollars. Oh, yes. Oh, and that 100%. puts you in a completely different stratosphere. Yeah, it's it's definitely different. That's uh, that's the biggest thing. It is a different deal. Um, and they, I mean, they. that's partly why they had to make sure that they were able to, to get this thing up and running. He's done a better job of making sure that they stay running during the pandemic. They yeah. have, I mean, the best they can. Yes. Yeah. They have kept live sports going and it's remarkable to me really, uh, that they are capable of doing this. I mean, it is, it's not common. It's not, nobody else has been able to do this. The NBA isn't coming back until the end of July, you know, really August, yeah, so I was about to say, yeah, I mean, it's really August. Yeah. So, and this is is different, but the NBA, everybody is. <laughs> Matt said, "Gary, move your mouse down; it's in your eye." Yeah, I had it over here on the on the article. Excuse me. Here, uh, I don't. Go ahead. Go I don't. Ahead. I don't know that it's different, man. I really don't. Like, is it more people? Sure, it is. I think it's a different breed of, and I'm not, this is not calling NBA guys soft. This is not that at all. These guys are professional athletes. They take a beating, they bang their bodies, they put work in. They are freakish athletes. Okay. Not calling them soft at all. It's a different mindset to play basketball and be great at basketball than it is to be a fighter. Okay. Fighter. I assure you, these fighters the majority of them did not grow up washing their hands before they ate dinner. Okay. Yeah. And I would bet that 90% of these NBA players, you walk in mama's kitchen, you wash your damn hands. That's just part of it. I've been in those homes. I was raised in one of those homes. I, I, I just, it's just a different way of life. And I, I, and maybe I'm wrong. Maybe I'm wrong. I just, I, I've listened to stories from fighters and they just, 
they've got grit. They've got just a little bit of rust on the side of them that makes them, you know, a little bit dirtier than everybody else. And just don't seem to be the germaphobes that, that other people could be. I don't know that you could be a fighter and be a germaphobe. I don't know that that's possible. If you could, you could do that. Could you roll around and somebody sweat dripping in your eyes, in your mouth, bleeding in your face? I don't, I don't know that that's possible. And you're not, your your sweat to sweat, your shoulder and your arms and your hands are all over another guy's sweaty ass in basketball, but but their sweat's not getting in your mouth. Okay, I mean, I'm it, sure it's it does not getting in your eyes, but and it's just a little different. Um, yeah. So yeah, I, I think I, I, you couldn't do it without the fighters. No, and the reason right. the NBA is 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 as long as it's been, I fully believe it's because of the players. The players are trying to make sure. That everything they, is safe, et cetera. They want it to be extra safe, and I think these fighters say, eh, a little safe is fine. Well, the, the other side of this is, I mean, UFC has had stuff going on uh, for a good bit now, and they've got guys from all over the globe that yes. are flying in. Play, like, they are able to travel. They are making it happen one way or another. Uh, NBA, MLB, you know, everything else, like, it, obviously, UFC has got money issues right now dealing with some of the biggest stars that they've got on the roster, but they're putting on fights. They're making this stuff happen, and they are coming up with entertaining matchups, and that's the biggest thing, right? You you want to you want to give people something to watch, but you don't want them to watch trash. Like, this has to be a showcase the, right now. The card, what was it, last weekend, the card that I could care less about. Yeah, 250. You shared out a couple of knockouts. I was like, I went back and I rewatched all those fights. Like, like I, that was a card that I could have cared less about. I just, it didn't matter to me. It didn't move the needle to me at all. Still ended up being really exciting and they got my eyes somewhere. Yeah. Because I, mean, I, I had to, you, I had to figure out what's going on. When you got guys like Sean O'Malley and you got guys like yeah. uh, Cody Garbrandt, stuff like that. Like, yeah. I mean, you're, you're going to be able to draw some eyeballs with that. So that's the thing. They got to keep, they got to keep entertaining fights going uh, in order to keep people interested in this thing. Like, that's, that's the biggest thing. The other big news that they came up with, they finally have a date for uh, Cormier and Miokic 3. And that's going to be August 15th. It will be on Fight Island. So, finally got that. That means, it, you know, if this one goes, at, whoever wins this is the greatest heavyweight of all time, according to all the media people, right? I don't know that you UFC can say, legend and Lord. I yes. don't know that you can say DC would be the greatest heavyweight ever because he wasn't always a heavyweight. Like he he moved up in class to fight Stipe and then beat him and then lost to him and now if he beats him again, yeah, because Stipe I think a lot of people claim that he's probably the best heavyweight of all time. I I think but, so. I'm a little biased in that, but I I think so. Yeah. So I, I think you know we'll we'll see what happens, but uh, but yeah, the the most recent fight on Yaz Island, by the way, was uh, back in September. It was Nurmagomedov, you know, Habib and Dustin Poirier. So uh, they've had big fights before. They will continue to have big fights here. We'll see what happens. Obviously, we want you know some of these bigger names, but tossing in uh, DC and uh, and Stipe for August, I'm I'm in, I'm in. So. UFC will have had like eight or nine events by the time the NBA comes back. That just blows my mind. Blows my mind. All right. Let's dump uh let's jump off of that one. Da, 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 da. And let's dive into a college football question. It comment, whatever. Just a, a topic to hit on. Um the question that I had written down was what is the downside of having a G5 playoff to go along with the college football playoff. Uh, I don't know that there is a downside here, but the way that I would set it up would be you do the G5 playoff, and if a G5 team were to get into the actual four-team playoff, which I think it's going to expand, so if they did it, you know, whatever, we'll figure that out. But the reason I bring this up... uh, I think that more meaningful football helps the sport. Am I crazy for thinking that? I want to get your thoughts on this. 
No, I'm I'm I like this concept. I really do. I I want the G5 to get more credit than it gets because its top end is really good football. Okay. Yeah. It's really good. And can they hang with the Alabamas and the Oklahomas and the Ohio State? Probably not. Clemson's probably not. Okay, that's fine. But systematically, we see these teams show up big in bowl games against other big-name schools all the time. And just because you can't beat those top five schools in the country year in and year out doesn't mean you might not be able to beat six or seven or eight, okay? And those would make unbelievable games. Now, we're not saying pit them against six, seven, and eight. Um, but here's the way that I'm looking at it. Okay. So Memphis last year played in the cotton bowl against Penn state. Memphis was right. far and away. We believe the best G five team out there. They beat Not Cincinnati close. twice. They, they, I mean, they hammered a bunch of ranked teams last year. Like they just, yes. they handled a lot of good teams. Fantastic resume. So Memphis going to the cotton bowl goes and gets 50 plus hung on them by a Penn state team that could not score against other teams that had good defense. Minnesota. Right? Yeah. Not not elite defense. I'm not talking LSU, Bama, yeah. Ohio State, Clemson defense. Yeah, Penn okay? State put up 17 on I'm Minnesota. I'm talking about Minnesota defense. So and, and that's the that's the score. issue, right? There's there's a talent gap there. So while it is fun to get to go to the Cotton Bowl, et cetera, you know, and you do have teams like UCF that show up against an Auburn. Um, or I mean, good gracious, UCF the year before that, when they played against LSU, LSU was missing basically the entire defense. Like, everybody's injured, people sitting out, all that kind of stuff in the Fiesta Bowl, and LSU still beat them. Now, yeah. obviously, UCF was without their starting quarterback, but... That's a big deal. That's a big it, deal. Yeah, big deal, but it's also a big deal when, you know, like four of your five starting defensive backs are yeah, sitting out. And, true, true. So and, and, a, and, and all those guys are NFL guys, by the way. Like, this, yeah, this like is not all, to take every away. Every person that didn't play in that game due to injury or sitting out, it is was going to get drafted or did get drafted that year. Like, right, right. So we, we are talking about UCF and Memphis who have made, you know, the, the uh, what are they, New Year's Six bowl games. Yeah. In the last three years, Boise's always in that conversation, right? So, always. So let me go through. If we were to make an eight-team playoff out of this, and they may not do eight, they could just do four, and we can figure okay. that out as well. But if they did an eight-team playoff last year, you had Memphis, Boise State, Appalachian State, who only had one loss, Miami of Ohio, and Florida Atlantic. Right? Those were the conference champion teams from last season. Then you also had Cincinnati, who had eleven wins. You had UCF, who had 10 wins after their bowl game. I would about say, had, I would take Cincy and UCF over most of those teams yeah. with, and then, with one loss. And then you've got Louisiana, who yeah. was really, really good. Their only two losses on the entire state. They went 12-2. and two. Their only two losses were to App State. That's yeah. it. So, yeah, Cincinnati's only two losses were to Memphis and then to Ohio State, which yeah, diff- different class. Exactly. So, Cincinnati... Their bowl game that they got for a ten and threes or a whatever in three season eleven and yeah. three I guess eleven and three yep they were at the the Birmingham Bowl against what Boston College isn't that right Yeah I don't remember they beat the hell out of somebody Boston College Yeah so I don't remember what it but was. that's it, for an eleven and three season that's what they got if if Memphis had not made the New Year's Six. Say that Boise State had gone undefeated or whatever, and Boise got that Cotton Bowl berth. Memphis's next best option is the Birmingham Bowl. Like that's what's insane. Florida Atlantic, I, what they ended up playing in their home stadium. That's what they got for an eleven win season. Like, give these teams more initiative, more incentive to play. And you can turn it into a big time event. We have seen this time and time again. So it would it would come across in theory like an NIT, and everybody would immediately roll their eyes. the The problem is is it's not going to be an NIT in execution. Okay, right. W- when you actually watch it play out, if you got great games out of it, you it would be way better. It oh, really yeah. would be way better. So even if you were to turn it into only a four team playoff. Yeah. You still you do two games on the same day in the same stadium. 
wait a week and then play a national champion or a, a G five yeah. championship. Well, and you can like, inter you can inter inter intermatch the bowls. We got to get rid of some of these conference tie in bowl games. You you could still you know send them out to San Diego and let them play in what would be the Holiday Bowl. You know, yeah. like that's that's a great trip for any of these teams because none of these schools are in unbelievable cities. Okay, Memphis would love to go to San Diego. Cincinnati would love to go to San Diego. Um, Boise, love to go to San Diego, like all of these places. And and you you get a week there, and you get your party, and you get your parade, and you get your whatever, and then you play a, a big time game in a big time city. And there's no no we're not we're not besmirching Birmingham. Listen, that's that's a, that's as close to home yeah. as you get for us. But come on, yeah, that's nobody wants to go to Birmingham. Yeah, no, it's it's the truth. Like that's not a reward for anyone. Well, on top of that, I mean, the the Mountain West Conference champion gets to go to uh, it was Las Vegas, and then yeah. and then they took away the Vegas trip. I'm about to say you they're know? about to bump that. So and and they're going to get to go to L.A. now, which should be that's, fun. But it's awesome. Know. That's big. But yeah, yeah. Uh, let me go through some of the comments here, uh, which everybody has said that like I'm still showing that we are live and we are rolling and everything is good, uh, but. Everybody on the platforms said that uh, that our feed is gone, so I don't know what's going on with that. Man, I'm about uh, to try to see. I'm about to try to see if I can pull up Facebook. Well, that's that's what I'm looking at. But they uh, Ben said that's the only one died. I can find. But uh, yeah. a lot of people said, "What the hell? You guys are gone." Um, nope, I got nothing on Facebook. Said they gone. Let's see. I'm trying to look at the restream setup, and it is saying offline. And yet I'm sitting here. I got looking at yep. it streaming. That is interesting. Okay. I don't know what to do about that. I guess we keep going. I mean, I guess. Sure. <laughs> I mean, we, we can't restart the show. Oh, now. Ben, no, Ben said Periscope's working. So, I mean, we'll see. We'll see. All right. Um, so, if we were to do a playoff like that, obviously, if you have one of these G5 teams that can get into the top four, then you do that. Um, but other than that, tell me that the Cotton Bowl last year would not have wanted Penn State against uh, Alabama or whoever, right? Yeah. Um, while Memphis, like, it's great for them to get an opportunity like that, it's also, okay, you know that you don't match up. So what is the purpose of going out there is, yeah, let's have a good trip. We don't really expect to win, but you know, this will be fun and we can see where we stand. If you're going into a G5 playoff, you are still playing for a trophy. Like, and it gives you more incentive to, you know, go out and schedule these non-conference games and whatnot to where you can actually test yourself in the season. I think that that could be a lot of fun. But I I, I think I think this is a fantastic idea. I think... Yeah, I do too. I don't really know how to matters. execute it. They, they, I'm okay with them always intermingling these things around bowl games. My problem is, is I'm not, I'm not the guy that says we got to get rid of some of these bowl games. My problem is, is we don't need five bowl games in the state of Alabama. I've been to Alabama. Okay. That, that we, that is not a destination for anyone. All right. There's not a single stadium that anyone in the world wants to go and play. So, there's they don't need one let open Jerry world up again and let them have another event and I'm sure Jerry world would love to sell tickets to that oh yeah and 100%. I bet you you know all these shitty bowls that no one can get a sponsor for put it in Vegas's new stadium and I bet I bet you magically get a sponsor oh yes. okay and put a better game together and I bet you get a sponsor yeah yeah, but we got to, so. at some point in time, in order to make the best matchups, we have to begin to tear down conference tie-ins to bowl games. We just do. Because that's handcuffing us from getting so many good matchups. Well, I have to take somebody from this conference and somebody from this conference and play them. We have to. But, but now we get a shitty game, and you've got a really good opportunity for somebody else to play another team that would be an unbelievable matchup. Yeah, I uh, I'm with you. I'm with you. I mean, I I don't understand it. I I don't. Uh, you know, I don't understand why we don't do more to to give people the opportunity to 
play for something that means a little more rather than attendance right now at bowl games are really bad. Okay. Bowl games are, we have 40 bowl games because they print money from TV dollars. Yeah. Right. Because on on a Tuesday afternoon in December, they'll draw 2 million eyes. All right. That that's why we have all of them. But if you, but if you take it out of middle of nowhere, Alabama, okay. And you, and you moved it to San Diego or somewhere, uh, just a vaca- a destination location, all right? Then, then it would be a hell of a lot better game to sell, okay? And, and fans would actually show up and go. Both teams would want to be there. I mean, I'm not just well, crapping on see, Alabama, okay? But the here, Motor City the Bowl does not need to be there, all right? It, Nobody wants to go to Detroit in December. Yeah. They really don't. Nobody. People who live in Detroit and have the money to leave leave during December. None of them want to be there. Yeah. No, I, I completely understand like, where like you're coming I, from. We have enough great, great destinations, and it doesn't have to always be warm weather places. I'm, I'm, I'm going to bet Colorado Stadium is a much better place to be than Motor City. Well, yeah, I think you're right, and, and we'll talk about that when we talk about our our top ten. Uh, I mean, I, I, so, so, okay, I, the Pinstripe Bowl every year. That's in, that's in a cold weather location, but it's New York City. Well, it's New York City. There's stuff to do. And that's an awesome destination for people to go at Christmas ben, time. New York is like the most magical city in the country at Christmas. Ben said the Tunica Bowl. Uh, I, it looks like we got our stream back up, by the way. That's good. I don't know uh, what we did. We, I, have no I guess idea. the I, magic of the internet. I well, went through and, and, and disconnected and then reconnected. Oh, uh, go. Good. So kick it, turn it off, turn it back on. I mean, yeah, twice. turn it back off and and whatnot. But uh, apparently, Periscope stayed on the whole time. I I guess that I don't understand any of this. Who but. knows? Who knows? I, it, it looks like Restream just kind of decided to crap out on us. The um, Tunica Bowl used to be a uh, dirt track. It was a dust bowl, <laughs> and I used to, I spent many uh, Saturday nights there. There you go. There you go. Um, the, in 2018, by the way, I'll I'll roll through these because I went through and did some research on them. Um, UCF was your AAC champion. Fresno State, your Mountain West champion. App State, Sun Belt. Mac was Northern Illinois. They beat uh, a really good, like, 11 win Buffalo team uh, at the last second, if you remember that. Um, yep. And then Conference USA was UAB. Uh, and then the three that I had outside of that was Cincinnati, who had 11 wins, Buffalo, who had 11 wins or uh, 10 wins, and Utah State. Uh, yeah. Utah State was 11 and 2. Um, Can't imagine a year where Boise wouldn't have been in it if we expanded to eight, but that's one. Yeah. Uh, and then 2017 was UCF, Boise State, Troy, Toledo, Florida Atlantic, uh, South Florida, Memphis, and Fresno State. The reason I didn't have Boise State in in 2018, they they went nine and four. No, and no, they didn't deserve to be in. Yeah, they didn't. Win they the weren't one of the best eight G five schools. I just they just they didn't have the resume to do it. Yeah. So I would imagine if they did, no, I'm eight, okay with that. It's just know. hard to it's hard to think about that. You and know? I also, you know what? I probably instead of putting Buffalo, uh, probably instead of Buffalo. We we probably would need to put maybe army like maybe some of these independents we would need to think about Notre Dame well, yeah has they enough. they would definitely be thrown in the mix of this yeah. absolutely so even though they're independent they, I they, think would, they would still be still they would go in this the criteria qualifier yeah. yes so um, just right. like Notre Dame gets thrown into the G five they get the thrown P5, into the, yeah. yeah to the B five they get thrown into the G five yeah all right so with that said let's go on and uh, we'll close out the show with this last topic since. You know, obviously nobody can see us. Nobody can get to us. I don't know what's going on. Uh, Facebook said unable to connect. Twitch said sending data. YouTube said sending data. And then Periscope says online. I don't know what's up. So we'll figure it out. It's uh, a restream issue. Everybody can uh, can obviously get the podcast. If you're listening, we appreciate you guys. Because <laughs> this is bonkers. Um, all right. So we wanted to do our top 10 college football stadium Bucket list. Uh, These are stadiums we've never been to. Yeah, well, some, yeah, I guess some. You've got one, right? No, no, I changed it out. No, nope. okay, all, all stadiums it. we've never been to. Okay, I'm fine with that. All stadiums that we have not been to. So that knocks out quite a few for me. Uh, Doesn't knock out many for me. I, I, I have, I just don't go to a lot. Of that's, that, I've, I've been to. I've been the older, to a lot the older I've gotten, Congress. the less so, I go, and I didn't have the money when I was younger. Uh, Northwestern would have been on this list, uh, Ryan Field, but we went last year, so there you go. So for our Westlot Pirate boys, that's what I don't up. know that it would have made my list, but I love those guys. Oh, I love those guys, but I, I did want to go because it's—I mean, it's a really old stadium, and that's kind of. That's kind I'm of glad thing. I went. I yeah. don't know that I ever appreciated it before actually going and seeing it. 
Oh, that makes sense. That makes I, sense. I, I just, it would have, I'm just on, it would not have been on my list at all. Now that I've gone and now that I've seen it, I have a much more respect for it. There you go. So with that said, I'm going to, we're going to have on. a lot of the same ones. I'm guessing I would, I'd be willing to wager. That's absolutely. okay. So, uh, so let's go ahead and mine are uh, in no real order. All right. I've got mine in an order, but I can obviously, I mean, I could change and them mine, around. Mine are in absolutely no order. There you go. <laughs> All right, I'm gonna let you go first. Uh, the the first one for me, I, I, okay. The, this one is is the most important one for me to go to. Okay, and that's Camp Randall. That's on my list. I I want to go. I want to find. It's harder now with Wisconsin and Fox and doing the Big Twelve kickoff to find a big night game because the Big Ten is big at all their big games, kind of in the afternoon and not really at night. I want to go to a night game at Camp Randall That's, so bad. I think I will say this: we we preface this with we want all of these games to be big games, like we want the stadium full, all that kind of mess. We, yeah. you know, it, you don't want to go against some non conference opponent and whatever. Um, yeah, but I could care less about that. There you go. So Wisconsin for you, mine is the Rose Bowl. I have not been to the Rose Bowl. Uh, I, I want to see the sight lines. I want to see the stadium split 50-50. I want two teams that wear different colors. Uh, you know, it, last year with, it, it, it looked like a Stanford home game between Wisconsin and Oregon. I mean, it was red and green. It was, it, you know, it was crazy. So it, it looked like Christmas. It was fantastic. Uh, so, yeah, I want to see the Rose Bowl at the exact time that they have it every year where the sun is just setting all that kind of mess. Pasadena is ridiculous. So Rose Bowl for me is my number one. What uh, what's your number two? Neyland Stadium is my second choice. That's a, I want that's a good to stand. Choice. I want to stand amongst a hundred thousand people. My my issue. I'm not the biggest Tennessee fan in the world. I do like Tennessee. If you've watched this show for the last three years, I've kind of become like the apologist for them. Come on now. We got to get out of the cellar. I just think the sport is so much better when one of the big boys is good and not a whipping dog. Um, I want to stand amongst a hundred thousand screaming fans. The Smoky Mountains are one of the most beautiful places in the world. Knoxville is a beautiful Knoxville's beautiful a great town. It's right there off the river. Like that that is that is perfection to me. If I had the ability to go to school anywhere and I could have afforded it to hang out, spend time, get my education and party in any city it probably would have been Tennessee. It would have been Knoxville. I will say, look, I, I went to two games there. Yeah. Fantastic. And Absolutely you went to two fantastic. games where you rooted for the other team. Oh, I'm, yeah. I'm going to want to go to these games rooting for the home team. Yeah. I okay. want to find a game in which I want them to win. Because it's sense. fun to go and to be a part of that crowd and not against that crowd. No, no, you. that is a very, very valid point. Uh, number two for me. I want to go to Penn State. I want to go to Beaver Stadium. I want the white out. I want it to be a prime time, a big time game with a hundred something thousand people up there, where it's chilly, it's cold. You know, I want to see that in person. I've I've never been. Uh, I've got family members that went last time Alabama played there back in twenty twelve or thirteen or whenever it was eleven maybe. Um, it's everything that I heard. The fans could not be nicer. Uh, the stadium itself, like the location and whatnot, is unbelievable. And I've always heard nothing but good things about it. I want to go and check out Beaver Stadium. I think it is uh, one of the coolest atmospheres in college football. And uh, and yeah, hopefully, eventually, I will get that opportunity. All right, who uh, who you got you, for three? You've you've got you've got two that are probably two of the most popular picks. Yeah, I'll I'll pass on both. Really? Yeah. Yeah. I'll pass on both. So why, like I why wouldn't say I would never go, and if somebody like provided an opportunity for me to go, or I was getting paid to go, then I would be there. But I'll I'll pass on both. Hey, you're you're gonna hate my third one then. That's that's fine. That's fine. <laughs> uh, my third one, I'm gonna do Notre Dame. I I never grew mind. up. That's my okay. third one. <laughs> no, I grew up in a in a very traditional Italian Catholic family. This is how I was raised. Okay, and and my family do not like sports. I am the one sports junkie in this family. They like hunting, fishing, NASCAR. Okay. Yeah. They, they are not sports fans at all. I was as 
black a sheep, an outcast as anybody could imagine. But I will tell you the one team they talked about was Notre Dame my oh, entire yeah. life. My grandfather wore a lot of hats. The only sports hat he wore was Notre Dame's. Makes sense. I want to go just, see Notre Dame it, Stadium. I want to see just, it. That's a place where I – some of these places, it's the game and it's the stadium, and yes, I want to see that. Others is I need the app. I need the whole experience. I need two or three days walking the campus. I need to. I need to stand in the in, in the church, and I need to. I need to go to the mass. I need to see the things and and experience these things as just. I, I don't know. That would be an homage to my granddad, and and I want to see touchdown Jesus, and That's I want to hundred percent what I was. Gonna I want to experience and take it all in. That's I. I want to go to a day game. I don't want to go to a night game because they. I mean, that's just kind of a recent thing. I. I want to go see a day game yeah. at Notre Dame, uh, touchdown Jesus, all that. At, I want to sit on the, you know, obviously they've been doing the re- renovations and all that kind of mess, but, you know, if they got any of those wooden bleachers left, all that kind of, I want to sit there. I want to, I'm not so to married feel, to nostalgia that I, I have am. to have, but, but I you know. So, I, now obviously, like, yeah, it's fine. I'll, I'll deal with the others. But, uh, but yeah, I, I would like to see it. The way that it was, uh, but I'm cool with the way that it is now. I got no problem with that. Uh, go ahead and give me your uh, your fourth one here because we we both had Notre Dame for three. William Bryce Stadium, the cockpit, baby. I know this is not on anybody else's list, but I, man, no, I, I it's on my others receiving votes list. I'm gonna I'm gonna tell you to the the opening the opening of that stadium. When when they start a game and they start playing, you know, mystery two uh, three thousand, all of a sudden, like it, and the lights yeah. go, and that place is as South Carolina is not a great football team. Okay, this is not LSU at night. That this is not Auburn and Jordan Air. This is not that. But th- don't tell those fans that. Okay, this is a fan base that Lou Holtz went o and ten o and what ten and or 11. how many games did they play back then? Yeah. It was 0 and 11. That's right. They didn't play 12 games. I knew that. 0 and 11. And literally three months later, when season tickets went on sale for the next year, they sold out the stadium. Yeah. That that's a fa- when I was in high school, I remember that. One of my best friends is a massive Gangcock fan. And and one of the reasons our friendship is so strong is I I love South Carolina. I have always been in the tank for South Carolina. I, I can't tell you why, other than the fact of that fan base meant something to me when I was in high school and I saw this putrid team go out. And then I saw their fans say, we don't care. We're showing up. We're supporting our guys. Listen, I love my tigers. Tiger stadium's not going to be 80,000 strong. If they go 0 and 11, it's no, just not. Gonna happen. It's, it's just hey, not going to happen. Kentucky football is the same way. Kentucky football fans sell out that stadium at constantly. Like and and they've been better as of late, but that program Stoops is a over massive time, hire for them. Oh yeah, Stoops has changed that program a lot. So and and they've had you know successful seasons here and there, but every single year they sell out of their season tickets and they support yeah. their fan base. And it, it look South Carolina supports their football team. Period. Uh, my yeah. fourth was Wisconsin, but I'm going to go on and move on to the next one because everything you just said with jump around and all that in Camp Randall, I want to go. I want to drink with everybody up there. I want to have a good time. Uh, my fifth one is Kyle Field. I want to go to Texas A&M, check it out. You know, it, everybody arm in arm, back and forth. I want to be a part of it. I want to feel the stadium swaying. Um, I want to see the new renovations, all that stuff that they've done to to up it after Johnny Manziel. I, I want to see all that. I think Kyle Field is uh, is fantastic. Michael jumped in on Twitch uh, before everything cut out. He said, uh, uh, he said, still nothing, Gary, but looking at the title, I may be a little biased, but College Station has to be in the top ten. Yeah. Yeah, so Kyle me, Fields yeah. actually, it was my my next pick as well. Okay. Um, I have been to the Yale. I was fortunate enough to do that while I was in Not college, my first that. freshman year. Um, spectacular evening for a young freshman in college. Um, but I had to go back to Washita and miss the game. So my my ride going back was leaving Saturday, and I and I and I missed the game. Um, that's a place that I absolutely going. I that's a place I'm going to make it to. Oh yeah. Absolutely. Uh, go ahead and give me your uh, your six there. Uh, I'm I'm gonna get off the beaten path a hair, and my my sixth and seventh are gonna be in the same lines. I I want to go to Jerry World. I want to go to. I know it's not really? a college stadium, but lots of college football is played there, yeah. and I want to go to a college game in Jerry World. Okay. 
Okay, I can uh, I can understand that. Uh, mine is a little off the beaten path as well. Uh, number six for me, I want to go to Cal. I want to go to Berkeley. I want to go to Cal Memorial Stadium. I want to see the trees, uh, all that kind of mess. I, I think it's a fascinating place to be able to watch a football game. Uh, I would obviously rather be in the stands, but at some point I would like to go out and I'd like to climb the trees and, you know, sit up there and actually watch a football game from there. Uh, they don't care as much about football up there, but the scenery is outstanding. Absolutely outstanding. Uh, going to San Francisco, checking out Berkeley, checking out, you know, all that kind of stuff over there. Uh, obviously, I've been over there a, a few times. I have not been to a game. I would really like to go to a game there. So, who uh, who you got for seven? My my seven is is uh, along the same lines. It's a brand new stadium. I want to go to Allegiant Stadium in Las Vegas. Okay, okay. And we are gonna have college football there. Yes. And and LSU is already kind of in negotiations with having having a couple of those neutral site games. And I will tell you, could you imagine if LSU is in Vegas, you will find Chris in Vegas. I I can't imagine a bunch of a bunch of Cajuns. They are not drinking that place dry, but I promise you, they will try. try. They will try. (laughs) People might die, but they. You think COVID took out some folks? Oh Lord! Let the let the let the Tigers come to Vegas. That might take out some folks. That's unbelievable. That's unbelievable. Yeah, that that could be uh, that could be a lot of. It fun. won't be me. It won't be me. I am not that. I can't do that. I I would be shunned with all of my LSU friends and family for my level of being able to handle alcohol. But that they will they will give it the college try. That makes sense. Yeah, I I could uh, I could get down with that. Uh, my next on the bucket list. Now, I would prefer that this happen when the team is good. And they haven't been for a few years now. But Canvas Stadium, Colorado State, the scenery around Colorado State, and the fan base, that is a fan base that cares, really cares. And when their team is good, that place is hopping. I would love to go see a game. that holds like 35,000 people. Uh, but the, the backdrop of the mountains and all that out there, at Canvas Stadium looks incredible and I've heard nothing but good things and that is a small but devout fan base uh, that I would love to go be a part of you know a tailgate and whatnot to see exactly how things go down down there Um, I mean Colorado State again hadn't been great as of late I would love to go when they're really good Uh, I think it'd still be fun even when they're not but the scenery itself is worth going out to uh, uh, where is it Colorado Springs yeah so yeah I'd love to go to uh, to Colorado State and check that out Uh, who you got for eight uh, I'm gonna go to Oregon, Austin Stadium. That's my number eight. There you go. That that place looks incredible. That's a great fan base. Um, and and the just the amount of kind of money and technology that Nike yeah. Phil Knight has put into that place. Well, the stadium uh, looks pretty incredible. Absolutely incredible. incredible. Yeah. yeah. Yes. So I, I would U- love Eugene to check it out. seems like a paradise for a fat guy who doesn't like humidity and hot weather. Oh yeah. And I've I've heard that the stadium itself is incredibly loud. I think it only holds what like sixty five thousand something like yeah, that. It's not super big, but I but yeah they, no that place gets loud. Built, you can tell on TV it gets loud. Yeah, you it, the way it's built, it just kind of yeah. keeps that sound in there. And yeah, I'd I'd love to see that. Love to see that. Uh, number eight for me was Oregon. I'm going to move on to uh, to number nine for me. Uh, I want to go to Kinnick Stadium. We we're very, we're we're getting to the end. I wonder. If we're going to be, if I'm on Kinnick Stadium as well, go ahead. Yeah, I I want to go. I want to wave at the kids. I want to be there for a night game. Uh, I I want to see Kinnick Stadium and and be a part of the tailgate experience. All that, like Iowa has a again very dedicated fan base. The stadium itself, you know, a lot of history, a lot of everything else, you know. And and if I had gone full history, I probably would have done like Nebraska and and stuff like that as well. But because Memorial Stadium is is pretty cool, but can it, it can't like, just be history though. It has to yeah. be history and relevancy. Like, yeah, you have to be entertaining right now, also. And and Iowa is entertaining. Yeah, I was still a competitive football team. Nebraska's not even a competitive football. No, team. not right now. Not right now. So yeah, yeah, I I, I like Kinnick Stadium. That's uh, that's definitely on my bucket list. I want to go see, you know, what's going on up there. Yep, me too. A second, all that. My last one. Okay. I 
I would like to go see a game at West Point. And this is a little bit Notre Dame ish. Yep. I would like to go to Army Stadium. And and I would but but so much of that is is walking around and seeing and and witnessing all the things around West Point. That's it. I, I had that on my others receiving boats as well. Yeah. Um my my last one is McLean Stadium in Waco. I want to go to Baylor. Uh, the new stadium looks oh, bonkers. Man, I didn't even think of that. There, because because I'm I, all I remember is their old stadium. Yeah, the new no, one. No, that's dude. That's a health choice. That's it. Yeah, uh, I yeah, can I, get to Waco a lot easier, and I can get to, <laughs> I can get to West Point. Yeah, you got that right. Uh, my <laughs> others receiving votes. I had Washington uh, Husky Stadium. I had uh, I had Williams Bryce South Carolina. I had uh, Yale and Harvard. So, so I, I also Army. had Yale and Harvard in, in considering I picked Army over those two. Um, but, yeah. I, I'm wondering, like, I, I thought about going to Annapolis, like what that would be like. Uh, I just don't, because I don't it's think such it's a big thing. city and it's not really a college town. Yeah, I think that's that's part of my, my issue. There. My, my issue is Annapolis is virtually in Baltimore. Yeah. And, you know, you're, like, there's a lot of people. It's not... There was no college town feel to that. Yeah. Naval Academy, it's just not the same as West Point, which is tucked away in the middle of nowhere. Now, you got that right. You got that right. All right. I don't know what happened to the stream today, but uh, hopefully we'll get it up. Yeah, we got to figure that out. But Who knows? But the podcast lives on, and the video is recorded, so we are good on that. We should not Can have we get problems. them back up on Facebook and yeah, I'm, I'm YouTube? Yeah, I'm going to upload them. Like, all that. It'll be on YouTube, right? Yeah, it'll be on YouTube. It'll be on Facebook. I'll, I'll get them uploaded. So... It'll be all good. We so, missed out on our friends. Yeah, we did. We didn't have uh, everybody chiming in, and that kind of that kind of sucked. But, uh, again, if you're listening to the podcast or you're watching this on the replay, make sure you jump in every day. Typically, we don't have any problems, but today, when you're dealing with Internet every day, it kind of becomes an issue. So, uh, it, once in a while, we'll have this crap happen. It is what it is. Hopefully, you don't hate us forever. Uh, go to winningcureseverything.com. Go to... Uh, uh, Good great tunicatravel.com. Good gracious. Uh, make sure you are subscribed to the podcast. All that wonderful stuff. Leave us a nice review if you would so kindly. Share the show out with your friends. All of that good stuff. As always, take care of yourself. Take care of each other. We'll see you tomorrow. Thanks for checking out Winning Cures Everything. If you want to keep up with us, hit subscribe on YouTube or your favorite podcast app. Visit the website at winningcureseverything.com or you can like us on Facebook or follow us at Winning Cures, at Gary WCE, or at Chris B. Giannini on Twitter. Share out the show, leave a nice review, and make sure to comment and tweet at us.